Hi guys, uh, we're back with the next bullet video after we've honed the bore, as you can see there. Um, we've had a rough check of the piston skirt to bore clearance, which in the manual I think is 0 0.005 inch, which equates to about um, 0.12 mil or something or thereabouts. Um, you can check this roughly, and I say roughly, with a feeler gauge or uh, a sheet uh, of feeler gauge type material of the specified thickness. Um, now this is only a rough check and basically you're looking for a sliding fit in between your piston skirt and your bore uh, all the way around. However, bear in mind that that's not the proper way to do it. Uh, that will only give you a rough ballpark idea because we're talking about such tiny tolerances that to do it properly you really need a dial bore gauge um, to read the bore and a micrometer to read the piston. That's the only way you'll be absolutely accurate. Piston in the bore, the correct way around and essentially it's just a case of you're looking for a sliding fit as you would if you were checking valve clearances and that um, as you can see fits all the way around and still allows a little bit of piston movement if I can do that it's difficult to show that on camera but you can see there what we're going to be doing next is the piston ring end gap now that's something that you can do safely and accurately with feeler gauges and, uh, and to do this you need to take your piston rings individually we'll start with the oil control ring the bottom one which is the thicker one with the slots in that you can see there. You need to push that in like so with the open end out, uh, outermost until you can squeeze the whole thing in and then to make sure it's seated nicely and evenly I take a piston and push it down to about the bottom of the second ring and you know it's well below the um, the top, as it were, of where the, the piston rings will land and you know that it's even in the bore. What you need to then do is measure the, the ring end gap, which will look quite, quite tiny even when it's right. Uh, the ring end gap in these are specified between um, 0 0.015 and um, and 0 0.020 uh, that's according to the book specifications however the recommendation from the people who knew the people who built and raced and tuned and, and generally messed around with these things the recommendations are to set it somewhere between 0 0.018 and 0 0.020 which equates to um, 0.45 to 0.5 mil for you metric types. So what I'm going to do is uh, jiggle about with these, fold up the ones I don't need. So what I've got here is I've had to use a combination to get my uh, 0.018 uh, which is 0.45 mil and a single one there which is 0 0.020 which is 0.5 mil. To remove these after you've done uh, the measuring if you tilt it towards you with the the split towards you until it pops out like so push the ends together and lift it out like that that avoids any unnecessary scratching of the bore we take our 0 0.018 measuring stick and that fits in quite nicely and I can just just squeeze a 0 0.020 into that one so that's the second ring so I will be leaving that one as is I won't need to adjust that so again flip it round press and extract and the final one is, is the top ring uh, this one has a chamfer on the top edge there and same procedure once more pop it in <coughs> seat it with the piston and once again, okay now I can't actually fit the, uh, 
um, 0 0.018 in there. It will fit the uh, the 0.12, but it won't fit the 0.18. So this one's going to need enlarging. So the next step is going to be taking the oil control ring and the top ring. We know that the middle one's okay and fits the tolerances. And uh, and what we then now need to do is file down these edges so that they allow the gap that we require in there. For enlarging the gap, as we can see we've got here, you can buy specific tools which are like a little uh, grinding wheel, uh, diamond coated. Uh, they're a brilliant thing because what you can do is you can set your your piston ring flat on there, hold it in place and it's got, it's got a couple of little sort of um, bump stops that hold your piston ring fixed and firm and keep the faces absolutely bang flush together and you then wind your wheel and your little diamond coated disc grinds away at your um, at your piston ring ends which is great however um, they're not particularly expensive but for somebody who's not going to do a great deal of this then a file will do just fine uh, this one's a little thicker than I would normally use unfortunately I can't find my thin file I have a points file um, for those who used to mechanic on old vehicles uh, or possibly those that still do you'll remember those they're a very very small very thin file that were designed for filing the face of contact breaker points the way that I do this is it's going to be a little awkward sort of doing this and showing you on the camera at the same time but essentially I make sure that both feet, both faces are firmly on either side of the file like so support it from underneath to make sure that they're held together and then draw the assembly up in one go now there are some trains of thought that say what you should do is just file one side so essentially you could make sure that you're holding it flush and draw up and file one side uh, like so and um, you can do that and it works it's, it's essentially all down to what works best for you the most important thing is that when you press them together that the mating faces are as flush as possible because this is what makes your gas tight seal once you've once you've got it to the right kind of size and regardless of whether you use the diamond wheel or whether you use an ordinary file you'll need to deburr the edges so basically the inside edges where it's likely to snag on the piston so you just need to very gently just take the edges the inside edge off there you fill with your thumb and you can see if there are any snags and it's going to catch because it's got to be free to move in the piston uh, what you don't want it to do is to catch or snag in there and then likewise same kind of thing with the bottom I'll try and do it this side so you can see what I'm doing there but you basically just you're just dressing up ever so gently the edges quick final look at this and as you can see I'm using a using a lamp here because I'm losing the light but um, basically I've uh, addressed up the top ring um, I went back to the file and cleaned that up two or three times and uh, I've, I've actually set this one to a relatively firmish um, 0 0.020 um, my reasoning being it's the top ring so it's going to actually have to cope with the with the most heat so um, the 0 0.018 sort of slips in there easily and the 0 0.020 is a um, slightly draggy fit which is, uh, is ideal for my purposes. Um, a little bit looser than the second, secondary ring and the oil control ring but only very slightly so. Um, and as I say I'm, I'm allowing for a bit of additional expansion with this particular one because uh, because with it being the top ring it's going to be subject to the highest amount of heat. So I hope this has been useful and thank you for watching.